Okay, everyone. So let's begin. Oops, I just muted myself. Uh, okay, don't touch that again. So, um, okay. So today, basically, I wanted to talk about the project, and I really, really uh, what I want to do is I want to talk about AVL trees since they're the next thing up, right? So we've talked about uh, binary search trees, right? And a binary search tree is an object where you know the rule is you know, if you're inserting or finding uh, when you have a data element, you go uh, left if it's less, uh, else go right unless you find the thing, right? Unless you find uh, whatever you're looking for. Um, and so basically we know that we have a left and a right child. We base so, but the issue with a binary search tree is this. The issue with the binary search tree is that the order of insertion kind of matters so you can end up with a tree structure that looks kind of like this and the way you can do it is that someone can insert say one and then insert two insert three insert four insert five and then what ends up happening is that the total right so normally our average uh runtime for a bst uh insert find is O of log n, right? Technically, well, yeah, let's just say O of log n. But the worst case is this, right? Where we have an O of n uh, type of thing. So, because here what you have is essentially what it is, is it's a linked list, right? And a linked list is, is, is a, a data structure where if you have to search through all the elements, that's an O of n cost. And now, of course, these things all have other children here. This has a left child, 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 and that has a left child, but they're all null pointers, right? So that's, so that's the reason why this is still a binary search tree, right? Uh, because as you go up, it's still going to the right. So everything here is a still a binary search tree. The only problem is that it has really bad runtime complexity. So, um... Let me get the names right for a second. So uh, an AVL tree, it's actually a, a name of, uh, so let me let me search for it. It's like, yeah, Adelson, Velsky, and Landis. It's like two guys, one of them is hyphenated, I think. So um, it's like the uh, uh, Birch, Swinnerton, Dyer conjecture. where uh, Birch is a guy and Swinnerton Dyer is the other guy. It's hyphenated. So um, so it's a, it sounds like it's three people. It's actually two people. And naturally the, um, you know, if we were talking to the right people, uh, we would hear, you know, how basically all things were invented in the Soviet Union ten, bef ten years before we did it in America and all this stuff, and and here's kind of one example of that sort of thing, where uh, so these were two Soviet researchers who who published their uh, the version of AVL tree. So, um, okay. So what is the purpose? So I know that now that I've introduced the name of the AVL tree, and I always have to Wikipedia just to make sure I get the names right. Um, so, what is the purpose of an AVL tree? And the answer is it enforces the uh, basically the average case performance uh, for a BST, right? And so it does it by rotation. So what we do is we see that here this is a very unbalanced binary search tree, and we don't want to uh, we don't want it to be allowed, right? This so this thing is a BST. Uh, it's not AVL. Right? And so I haven't told you what the rules for AVL are yet, but I will in just a second. Um, the idea of uh, Adelson Velsky and uh, Landis were to the idea 
of the, these guys was to use heights, right? Basically, what you say is the heights of any two subtrees uh, come tress trees uh, coming out of any given node can only differ by at most one. So it would be it would be easier just to say, and like it comes from the idea that you want the two heights to be equal, right? So the secret is you want the two heights to be equal, uh, to be equal. But the problem is that actually there are cases where you can't really do. There's some trees where you just can't absolutely do that. So let's do this again, and let me show you an example of how to make. Uh, something like this where we have the insertion order one two three four five let me show you what AVL is going to do to that and then we'll watch the the diagram and and you can see it actually working and then we will talk about the implementation and then we will talk about the project which uses AVL trees so the whole point of today is to eventually get to the project where AVL trees are the, the main thing so if we're gonna insert one two three four five right One, two, three, four, five. So we insert one. There isn't any other node, so one becomes the root. And the only rule here is that we aren't allowed to know that uh, the future inserts. So if we knew the future inserts, we might say something like, okay, well, one is the root, but as soon as another node is going to get inserted like two, what we'll do is we'll put that as the root, and then we'll know that we're going to balance stuff out a little bit better, but we, we're not allowed to know that. So because we don't know that, what we're going to do is we just insert one, so that's fine. Now let's insert two. Insert two. Two is bigger than one. I always love saying things like that. Two is bigger than one, right? Um, but I'll say it because it's both true and also relevant. So. 2 is bigger than 1, so it goes right. And this is exactly, so I'm going to tell you, I know you don't know the rules for AVL other than the heights can differ by at most 1, but this is an AVL tree. This is an AVL tree. And you might ask, well, why is it an AVL tree? And so what's the height of the left subtree? So is there a left subtree? So no, there's not a height of the left subtree. So what we're going to do is we're going to say the height of the left subtree is equal to zero because there is no left subtree, right? Height equals zero because that's a null pointer. And now again, there are some times where sometimes they'll set height equal to negative one if it's a null pointer, height equals zero if it's a null pointer. It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent, right? As long as you're consistent, it doesn't matter. So for now, we're just gonna stick to height equals zero for null pointers, right? So for us, right now, height equals zero means null pointer. Okay, um, and that's what it currently means for us. Now, yeah, we that can change in the future where we might need to do some other kinds of trickery, but for now, it's zero. Okay, so this is height zero, this is height zero, this is height zero. So the heights of these two subtrees, height zero and zero, they match. That's equal. The heights of these two subtrees, well, the height of this one, uh, the height of any tree is equal to the max of the two heights uh, plus one. Okay, so that's the rule for the height of any given node. I shouldn't say the height of a tree, I should say the height of a given node is the max of the height of the two uh, children children's heights plus one. So here you say what's the max of these two? The max of these two is, um, hmm, what is it? Zero. <laughs> And then you add one, you get one. So the height here is h equals one. And then what do we do? So we say the height here is going to be the max of zero and one, which is one. We add one, so the height is equal to two. And so that's, that is how we're calculating heights on all these nodes. Okay, let's insert three. And I'm just telling you that this is an AVL tree because how can you tell this is an AVL tree? Let me just show you. You can tell this is an AVL tree because, let's put some arrows on these. Um,
I'll make it green. Okay, so the reason why these are an ABL tree is because these heights, they match. And what I mean by match is that 1 and 0 are only 1 apart, and so that's the rule. And then here, uh, 0 and 0 are only 0 apart, so they match, right? So they match, and they almost match, right? And almost match is within the rules, right? You're allowed to almost match as long as it's only one off, right? So that, that's why this is an ABL tree. Notice I am not, what am I not doing? So this is something that, that I think confuses a lot of people, and so I'll talk about it. Um, it's easy to say, wait a second, but this node and this node, right? And let's make it uh, <laughs> something like that, something like that. Let's make it red, so you know this is bad, right? Red, red doesn't generally means bad, right? And so it's bad to consider the heights on different levels. Okay, so you might say, wait a second, this is height equals two, this is height equals zero. They don't, they're not almost matching, right? They're different by more than one. And so you might say, well, that that's breaking the AVL rule. But remember what the AVL rule actually is. It's the height of, uh, use heights. Heights of any two subtrees coming out of any, any given node can differ by at most one. So here, even though this is height zero, this is height two, so there's a difference of two here, this is still allowed, right? And you see that this kind of has to be allowed because if we insert two nodes into any tree, either you're gonna get one, two, or you're gonna get one, two. So you're either gonna get something on the right or something on the left. You know, if you get something on the, on the left, then it's going to mismatch on this side. If you get something on the right, then it's going to mismatch on this side. And there's nothing you can do about it with two nodes. And, and we do want AVL trees to have two nodes in them, right? Okay, so let's insert three. Let's do it. Uh, let's insert three. Here we go. Three gets inserted here. And then what happens, right? This is still height equals zero. This is still height equals zero. Um, this three has these two children, so we can just stick this on here. So this is good. These match. But now this thing is at height one. This thing is at height two. And um, let's see if I can copy paste it so that I don't. I mean, really, I should probably just retyped it, but I'm so lazy that I did that instead. That thing is at height three. So. Is there a problem here? And the answer is, well, these two match. So we're good there. These two almost match, right? So I'm not gonna write match there. I'm gonna just put a green thing. These two almost match, so we're good, right? They're different by one. But then you look up here. So we're happy, we're happy. Uh-oh. Or unhappy, right? Because this node has a height of two, and this node has a height of a height of zero, and so two minus zero or zero minus two. Basically, you take the absolute value of the height of left height minus right height, right? And this has to be less than or equal to one. That's the rule. So the absolute value, and I guess I could type that in LaTeX or something, but the absolute value. Um, of the two things has to be less than or equal to one. So, is that the case here? And the answer is, it is definitely not the case, right? The absolute value um, of the left node is zero minus two, but you hit it with an absolute value, so zero minus two is um, negative two, absolute value is two, that is bigger than one. So since it's bigger than one, I draw the little red arrow there, so it doesn't match. Okay, so this is not an AVL tree anymore. But the question is, what do I do about that, right? What do I do to fix this, right? And the answer is there's one operation. I shouldn't say there's one operation because I, I, I don't know, I haven't proved that. To, it's possible there's more operations. But I think there's basically, um, 
one operation on a single node that preserves the order of the BST. So what you could do is you could say, okay, well, what I'm going to do is push this one down to be the left child. And you might say, okay, well, that's fine. So that would make it balanced, right? So what it's actually called is a rotation. So we call them tree rotations. There's really just one tree rotation, but you can either rotate right or left. It depends on which way the heights mismatch. In this case, we are going to rotate to the left direction. So I'm going to draw it in kind of like this, uh, and then we will recolor that because I don't want it to be red. There we are. Sure. So we're going to rotate uh, to the left. And so when I say rotate to the left, what do I mean? We're going to rotate around this node to the left. This is kind of what I'm going to draw. So what I think this means, at least to me, is that we are going to take, um, we are going to take, let's make a copy. Okay, let's push it down here a little bit further. There we go. Now it's cleared. Oh my, that was a huge mistake. Okay, good, better. I wish I could turn off that rotation feature. Um, okay, so, um, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna delete this little arrow, but we're gonna rotate around this node, and what I mean by rotate around this node is that we're going to take this node and we're gonna push it down here to be the left child. And you might say, but wait, what if there was already a left child? Well, we'll get to that if there's actually a left child. And uh, that's what happens. So this is good now, right? Let me just uh, do this and then something like, something like this, right? Okay, so now you see that this is of height two this is of height one, this is of height one, and we have four, um, what do we call them? Um, null like leaves at height zero. So I'm gonna get rid of all the null leaves at height zero, and I'm just gonna draw the tree like this now, because I don't want to um, be, I don't wanna have tons of null leaves anymore. Okay, so this is height three. Oh, I'm sorry, this is not height three anymore. We've decreased the height of the tree by one, and you see now this is AVL again. Cool. All right. So now let's insert four and see what happens. So we're going to insert four. And we'll put it like here. And now at this point, we go back to our rule, right? The rule says that this is height one, this is height one, this is height two, right? And so the question is, do these match, right? Do these match? Or do they not match? What is the rule? The rule, as we always say, is that the uh, heights of the two children, so basically the heights of the children of the root here, uh, must differ uh, by at most one. And so, at most one, is that true here? Uh, two minus one is one, so that's at most one. So that's why we can keep the green arrow uh, this is still AVL, right? And I'll color that green. AVL is green, right? And this is uh, this is not AVL, so it, it becomes red. Cool. So let's do one last thing and insert five. Inserting five. And so if we insert 5, we're going to get the same problem that we got when we inserted, uh, oh crap, there we go. We got the same problem that we have when we inserted, what you call it, when we inserted 3 and we ended up with a chain that was wrong. Because here we have height equals 1. On the other side, that's height 0. Here this is height 2. Uh, on the other side is height uh, 0, I guess. So this, this matches here, but
but then, and this is height one here, right? And so this is height two, this is height three, uh, this is height four. So we see that there's a problem because this matches with height zero, okay? Yep, cool. Um, but this one here, when we go up to this node here and we look at the uh, this path, right? And I shouldn't this shouldn't be green, right? Because I I just copy pasted it, but that, let's change that to red before there's any confusion. So here you see that there's a mismatch at this level. Either you can say there's a mismatch at this level, or really there's a mismatch here. You only detect the mismatch right here. You detect the mismatch when you check threes. Uh, that's when you detect it. So when you check three's children, uh, that's when you see the mismatch. Okay? So that's when you see the mismatch. All right. Cool. So then what do we do? We do the same thing we did before. We rotate, which means in this case what we're going to do is we move... Um, okay, and I should make this not AVL and make this red. Finally, what do we do? Let's copy paste. There we go. So we see the mismatch. Um, <laughs> uh, would it be clockwise or counterclockwise? Um, I guess a left rotation is uh, counterclockwise. So we actually haven't done a right rotation yet. We're just doing another left rotation um, on th three. And so I'm going to put left rotation on three in quotation marks because it's it's possible that you can think of it as a left rotation on four or a left rotation on three. Let's call it a left rotation on three, four. That way we encompass the description, right? So we're basically trying to rotate this one up. Uh, we use left, right because trees have left and right. You know, because uh, basically what happens is uh, we're trying to rotate in, in the, this direction here. We're trying to go this way. And uh, the tree understands this as what? As, as left. Right, so we're going to, I mean, I don't, I know that in, in like, what, what would you call it? In like Euclidean space, in like Rn, you would talk about rotations in certain clockwise or counterclockwise directions, but here we just we talk about them as as left or or right rotations. So okay, how do we fix this? So what we're gonna do make another copy because I want this part to be here. Uh, oh wait, no, this is the one that I am gonna fix. Um, so here, what I'm gonna do. I am going to fix this one. We're going to rotate this node up. So this node becomes, and let's delete the heights or move the heights aside for the second because all the heights are about to change, which is actually a hint here. You will have to, um, you will have to change the heights on your AVL tree. So here what we're going to do is we're going to move this node down. It's going to become the left child of four. And then what's going to happen is five is going to move itself up and it gets to keep its height right it gets to keep its height let's delete these h equals zeros so now these two match so green height equals one for both of these height equals two here and then this one has to get reevaluated too so height equals three here okay and then basically you would check here and the heights match within one, so that's okay. Um, and so now we've gone from not AVL to AVL again. All right, so now this is AVL again. So, okay, so we see that there are ways to do this, right? So let me save this just in case it crashes, because this is huge. 
This is going to be a huge document. Okay. As it turns out, this program is somewhat, <laughs> somewhat stable. So occasionally it will just randomly absolutely crash. I haven't had any crashes recently, but, um, but you never know. So let me just go over the four cases, okay? So it's like the four children on Passover, right? Four cases. Um, and so what are the kinds of, basically the four cases are asking, what are the kinds of imbalances which can occur, right? That's what it's asking. It's asking, what are the kinds of shapes, right? What shapes can we make and how do we fix them? Right, so those are the two, the, I, three questions, two, three questions. Really, this is like a single question that splits into A and B, right? So let me show you all the different cases that can happen. So, um, Yes, let us do this this way. So let's change everything back to black. Uh, there we go. Uh, set stroke. Okay, let's delete it, make a new circle. I, I want the thickness of the circle to be a bit bigger. Doesn't it feel better if they're a little thicker? Uh, stroke. Uh, fill, no, stroke. I think it's, there should be some kind of thickness setting. Eh. Maybe I just don't see it. What did I just do? Okay, good. You see, that's that's my problem. I, I crashed it. Or I did something bad. Thankfully, I saved it. Here we are. Okay, back to what we're doing. Let's draw a circle. Oh, perfect. All right, so this is this is a node where the imbalance is going to occur, or maybe it's its parent. Let's make it, uh, the, we'll call this the parent, okay? And uh, let's make the font a little smaller because otherwise we will be drawing huge, huge nodes. Let's make the parent uh, light blue. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we will draw another circle. Actually, let's just copy paste the circle. So, um, here's where the imbalance is going to occur. So, so there's going to be another subtree here. Let's make this one red. And so basically here, this is the other node. Let's make this one, I don't know, a yellow color? Sure. So, okay. And then what are the possibilities? So there's four, cha there's four different possibilities that can happen on an AVL tree. And so the four possibilities are that we have basically uh, let's talk about the left-left variation. And so what I mean by left-left is that we have um, nodes like this. Let me show you how it works. And so what do I mean by left-left? What I mean by left-left is that um, the height of this guy is bigger than the height on the other side. Um, the height here is bigger than uh, this one. And also the height here is going to be bigger than this one. So this is the the full drawn out tree. And now of course these nodes can also have children, right? So it's possible if we drew all this out that these nodes would also have children like this, little subtrees of their own. Uh, but I'm just not gonna draw all of it because it can get really confusing if there's a lot of extra subtrees. So here's where the imbalance is. 
Um, so basically what we know is that the height here, so this will be like h minus 2 here, and we'll call this h here. And so since this is a subtree, this will be of height h plus 1 here. And, uh, right, so these are the heights, height h minus 2, height h, and height h plus 1. And then basically, what we're going to assert here is that maybe the height here is uh, h minus 1, and the height here could actually be h minus 2, right? Or it could be h minus 1. So either way, right? It could be one of these. And so now we know that we have a height that's bigger. So what do we do here? Right, so what we do, uh, actually let's, I don't think we need that. So I'm going to make this guy yellow here. And that way we'll um, have some different colors. So actually, yeah, let's make them all different colors just so that we can figure out which one goes where. So let's make this one green and this one is uh, purple. Okay, cool. So now let's do a general left rotation. So this is what you do for a general left rotation. Okay, so for general left rotation, we're going to do what we did before, right? The blue node comes up to become the parent. So to do a general left rotation, we, we go this way, and, and this one wants to become the parent. So, but you see that there's a problem now. There's a problem of just making it the parent. So let's, let's kind of make it the parent. And then you see you see the issue. Ah, crap. Oh, thank God. Thank God I saved. Because it just crashed half of my things. Okay. Darn, I lost a lot of work there. Should have saved. Okay, we can actually we can recover it if I just copy paste this and um, delete everything and then recolor everything. And then we should be good. Okay, we're almost there again. So the blue node is the one where the imbalance is. The yellow node is its sibling, right? Sibling means it's the child on the other side. Uh, I think I used green up here, and then I think I used like magenta here, and then I used, I don't know, what did I use over here? I can't even remember. Um, doesn't matter. Let's use uh, another color. What's another color? Dark green. OK, so I'm going to save this now because I I love how I, t I said that the, uh, height, the, the thing was a little bit unstable and then it crashes like twice. So this will be height minus 2. This will be height h. This will be either height h minus 1 or h minus 2. We don't know. And this will be height h minus 1. Okay, so the only rule is that this one is either heavier or equal. So now, again, I'll save it, and then we will... Let's try to do the rotation. So to rotate left, what we're going to do is we'll drag these nodes, and we'll put them down here, and we'll move this node up, right? So this node comes up to be the parent. But you see the problem here, right? If this node comes up to be the parent, uh, right? That's an issue. So how do we fix that issue, right? So we want the blue to come up to be the parent, right? Want blue to be parent. We want um, green, uh, light green, on the uh, on the left child, but magenta is already there, right? So if we tried to move, if we just try to say like, oh, just stick, uh, just stick this guy as the left child, then we're accidentally deleting this entire subtree here. So that's a problem. Notice that in our earlier example, we didn't actually have that subtree uh, because we only had children on that side. So, okay, so say we put this up as the parent now. What do we notice has happened, right? What do we notice about the right child of light green? And the answer is 
we notice that uh, the child is gone, right? Because blue was there before. Now, I guess it's either blue, light blue, teal, whatever. It's the bluish color. Um, now, blue is the parent. So the right child is free, right? It's open. So here's the thing that we have to realize. What do we know about a binary search tree, right? What we know about a binary search tree is that um, if we look at this one, right? This one is in the center of this and this. So all the stuff over here is less, all the stuff over here is greater. The stuff in the magenta tree is greater than green, but less than blue, right? It's greater than green, but less than blue. So can we stick this thing onto here? Can we prune this thing off? It's called pruning. Can we prune it off of here and stick it on to this subtree? And the answer is yes, because remember, it's magenta stuff is uh, less than blue, bigger, bugger, bigger uh, than green, right? And here, it's bigger than green, right? And then we're going to stick this guy here. And what does that mean? Well, anything here has to be less than blue, but bigger than green. So, so this is still right. So this is still happy, right? So the good news is that what we get to do is we get to move this node up, right? We move this node up, we stick this node here, but then we have to shift the magenta node over, right? So that's what happens in this case. All right, and so now we have to recompute all these heights. H minus two is fixed, H minus one, H minus two is fixed, this is fixed. But what about this one? So this is no longer H plus one, this is now height. Uh, what is the height here? The height is either H or H minus one, depending on, depending on, whether or not this was, right, depending on whether this is h minus 1 or h minus 2. Cool. And then we check all the heights. So h minus 1, h minus 2, they match. Or h minus 2, h minus 2, they match. h minus 1, h minus 1, they match. h minus 1 and h, they match. And what, what I mean by match is that they can differ by at most 1. So here we have a match. Here we have a match. Here we are back up at either height, technically either height h plus 1 or h, depending on that. But the good news is we know we don't actually care so much about the height here. All we have to do is care about the height at here and we care about the height at here and everything is rebalanced now, right? Because either everything is in perfect balance or there's like one more node in one of these subtrees that's causing a one imbalance, which is okay. So that is the left, um, we'll call this the left left rotation, right? This is the left left case. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess this is actually the right right case because it causes a single left rotation. There we go. Okay, so let's make this 35 to make it bigger. Okay, cool. So now let's talk about the other four cases. So this is one case, and now you can see that there's another case, and it's a symmetrical case of this case. So this will be the left left case. And this causes a single right rotation. So let's do this one as an example. And so basically everything's going to be the same, except here things are heavier on this side. And I guess actually, uh, yeah, so here we are. This is h minus 2, that's h this will be h minus 1, this will be this. Okay. Now what we do, let's delete all this. And so now what we do in this case is basically the same thing. What we want to do is we want to rotate this. Uh, crap. Nope. There we go. So we want to rotate in this direction somehow. So what we're going to do, this is now our first right rotation. So what we're going to do to do the right rotation is we're going to do almost the same thing as we did for the left rotation, right? 
this node is going to come up and become the parent like this. But then you see, wait a second, we can't just stick this node on here because there's an interference, right? So let's actually make this a different color now. Let's make this uh, red just so that it's... So you see, we can't just stick green over here because red's already sitting there. But what we can do is remember that green had a left child. But now green's left child is gone because it's now the new parent. So what we do is we take red and we stick it on as the child of green, like this. And then we stick green on as the child, the right child of yellow. So now we have to recompute all the heights. So H minus one, this thing and this thing, they don't get messed with. Um, and so now what happens is that this is either H minus one or H minus two, which now matches here. And then this thing is either H or H, right? I guess if this is H minus one, then this, the, the max of this has to be H. So there we go. That's a single right rotation, right? We took this node, we pushed it up, we pushed uh, green down. Um, notice we never actually touch, so this one never gets touched, right? So this one never gets touched. Um, and this one over here also never gets touched. And you might say, but it moves around. And the answer is it does move around, but it, it, it starts off as the left child of like this horrible orangey color, which I should probably pick a more yellowy color. Come on, is this, what's a good yellow color? Oh, here's some good yellow colors, I think. Or maybe just pick yellow. Yeah, that's the best way. So, okay, good, we got rid of that orange color. Um, so here you see that uh, yellows so like yellow dot, uh, dot left is equal to purple or magenta or whatever, right? And you notice that never changes, right? That never actually changes. And then also you notice that green dot right is equal to teal, blue, whatever. And that also never changes. Both of these never change. The what actual changes occur, right? And the answer to that is, well, what actual changes occur? So the answer is that um, green dot, uh, what is it? Green dot left is red now, and yellow dot right is equal to green, right? So that's what happens. And now, of course, you know that you need to make a temp variable here. If you're actually going to code this up, you'll have to say something like temp is equal to uh, green dot left. And then you'll have to say, um, you know, something like that. But the point is that yellow dot right is equal to green, right? Yellow dot right is equal to green. And green dot left is equal to red. And so that's, those are the two changes that actually occur here. All right, so th that's the left left case. Okay, so let's do it again. Now let's do the, uh, I guess the left right case maybe. Let's do that case. And then we'll put it all together right after we do all these cases. So let's do the left, uh, left right case. And so by left right case, I mean that the left is more unbalanced and unfortunately, this needs a double rotation. And I'll show you what we have to do to do this double rotation. So, first we're, so, okay, let's, let's get the situation down. So let's actually say that this is of height um, H minus two. And let's say that this is of height H minus one, okay? So now we know that this direction is heavier. Um, so this is not just the, the left left case, right? First we have a left imbalance because the left subtree is heavier. So it's, it makes it a left imbalance because the left subtree, yellow is heavier, right? Yellow is heavier than, um, what is it? Or not heavier, taller than blue. 
But then also it's a left right because then um, red is shorter or no, I'm sorry, red is taller than magenta or purple, right? So that's that's why it's an alternating case because here what we see is that this case has to be, it's in a straight line, right? Left left case and the right right case, they're in a straight line. But in this case, the actual problem is here, right? You have this zigzaggy kind of imbalance where here's heavier than this, but then this is heavier than this, right? And so it causes this weird zigzag imbalance. So how do you fix the zigzag imbalance? The answer is the first thing that you do is, so here's how to fix it. And it seems weird because you're actually going to, it looks like you're making it more imbalanced, but you're actually kind of fixing it. So the first thing that you do is you rotate this node up or you rotate this node left. So the first thing you do is you rotate uh, left on the yellow red edge, right? So you rotate that left, which means that you end up with something that looks like this. And of course, let me just delete the heights because they're not actually going to be correct after I do this. But let's compute the heights now. Right, so what happens when we compute the heights? Uh, when we compute the heights, what's going to happen is that um, this node here is going to have, so yellow, let's see, let's look at yellow. So yellow had a left child, uh, but now it doesn't. So it just has this right one. So there's nothing over here. So this just has height h minus 1. And so this one could have had some children, uh, but those heights have to be less than or equal to h minus 2. So this has to be, uh, the height of this has to be h. And the problem here is you see that this didn't actually solve the imbalance, right? This didn't completely solve it. So what we have to do next is we have to rotate uh, right on the um, green red edge. And what I mean by that is that we have to make so now what we have to do is we have to push this up to the root and push these down and see what happens. So what's going to happen here is that this stuff here uh, gets pushed down to here like this and then we have to recompute all the heights so this one had height eight. The only reason why this one had height h plus one is because this had height h. So remember, we have to compute the heights of the subtrees. When this one gets pushed down, uh, its height is going to be h minus one again. And then the height of red is still h. So actually, that's the only thing that changes. And so that's how this fixes itself. So you notice here what we're doing is we're actually making what we're, what we're secretly doing is making the zigzag case into a straight line case. Because here, once you see that the imbalance is h minus 2 and h, now if you saw this just, uh, if you just saw this without knowing anything else, you would say, oh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rotate right, which is actually the correct answer. So if you just started with this tree and I gave you these heights, you would say, this is a mismatch here because this is h, this is h minus 2, so they're different by 2, so I have to rotate right. And so that's, that's how to do it. And so now we have all the heights are balanced again, and we are happy. Okay. All right, and then there's the last case. Uh, the last case is kind of the symmetric case of this. So there's basically, there's basically two cases. There's either you zigzag and do a double rotation, or you do a single rotation. But each one of them breaks down because left and right are different. Um, so let's delete this bit of text here. And let's, uh, what should we do? We have to flip all this stuff, 
right? Because now we want the height and balances to be on the other sides. So let's push this over to here. And then let's do this on this side. Okay. Same problem, well, almost same problem. We got to flip these two. We got to flip these as well. Um, okay, so what's the problem? What's the problem here? Um, the problem here is that there's an imbalance here, but this is heavier, right? So this is heavier than this one. So this guy's the heavier one, and this guy's heavier than this one. So what we need to do here is the same thing that we did before. We need to rotate uh, left, or I'm sorry, rotate right on the, um, I guess, purple yellow edge, right? So we rotate, basically what I mean by this is that we rotate purple up to yellow. That's what I really mean, rotate purple up to yellow. And so by doing that, what we're going to get is we're going to get this. So yellow comes down, purple goes up. Uh, what are the heights? I don't know what the heights are. So that's height h minus 1. This will be height h. And we need another line. So that's the point here is what you do is you uh, rotate purple up to yellow. So um, let me copy paste this and then undo so that we have the original. That's the original. So the first thing you do is you rotate purple up to where yellow is, and then yellow comes down. And so here we still have the imbalance, right? We still have the imbalance, but it's okay. Then we rotate left. Uh, what I should say is rotate purple up to green, right? Rotate purple up to green. Technically, that's a uh, that's a left rotation. So we did a right rotation to make the straight line. And now we're going to do a left rotation to make uh, to make it balanced. So let's do this. Let's make this balanced. So we take this stuff here. That height a plus, h plus 1 is going to go away because it's not true anymore. Um, so here we go. So now everything is balanced again, because this matches with this secret guy here. Uh, this will match with this one here. This h minus 1 matches perfectly with the h minus 1. The height h doesn't really get checked, but it's height h now. And that's what happens, right? So what happens is, if you see an imbalance, but it's a zigzag, then you have to do this other case. So you have to push the purple one up, and then you rotate. So basically, you're pushing the purple one up twice. You push this one up to this and then you push it up again. And so that's those are the four cases here. Those are the four cases. And so that's AVL insertion. <laughs> well, actually, that's not AVL insertion. Those are the four cases. So we need to talk about AVL insertion. So how do you do? So now, OK, how do we do uh, AVL insert? So the answer is same way you do BST insert. So you basically insert just the exact same way. You don't worry about heights. You don't do anything on the way down. So on the way down, uh, inserting into the tree, it's 100% exactly a BST insert. The only difference is on the way back up, you need to check the heights. Right? You need to check the heights and then do the rotations if there is a problem. So basically, that's what you have to do. So let me uh, pull up the visualization and show you, and then maybe we'll do some coding. So um, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. Here's the. It looks mega old, but it, it's a good visualization for this stuff. So let's insert something like 12. Let's insert something like 8. So, and then let me insert 4, right? If we insert 4, what's going to happen is um, it's going to insert as usual, right? Uh, step forward. 
So that's the BST insert. Nothing changed here. But then you see that there's an imbalance. The imbalance is going to occur. Well, no, I'm, I'm sorry. The imbalance is not going to occur here because this is one and zero. The imbalance is going to occur here where we see a two and a zero, right? There's nothing on this side, so it has height zero. This has height one. So two and zero don't match. And that's what causes the uh, right rotation that's just about to occur. So it says adjusting height after recursive call. And then what it's going to do, single rotation right. There we go. Done. So now let's insert 17. 17 will not cause any problems. Uh, insert, please. OK, so now let's insert. Uh, let's insert uh, 10 so that we get that. And I'm doing all this so that there's no imbalance. But now let's insert um, 15. And so that should cause, I think that should cause uh, an imbalance, right? So inserting it is as usual. And then here what we see is we go back up. That's a height two. Go back up. It's a height three. So now we have a three one mismatch here, right? So this is okay. This is okay. This is not okay because this is a height three and one mismatch. So what's going to happen here is let's let's look at the situation. So there's a mismatch here, right? And it's three and one. Actually, I'm sorry. So this, I think this is just going to do a single left rotation. And the reason why it's going to do a single left rotation is because you notice it's heavier on the right and it's heavier on the right. So uh, basically you notice here, you go down, this is the heavier side, the heavier side. So unfortunately, it's just going to do a single, right, uh, a single left rotation and be done. So uh, let's step back and let's look at the rotation as it's happening. So what's happening is that 12 is coming up to be the root. Um, 8 is going to go down and become this child. And then 10 is going to, so basically what's going to happen is as 12 moves up, 10 is going to rejoin with 8 as the right child, right? And uh, 8 is going to come down and be the left child here. So you see 8 has 10 as the right child right here. It's the left child of 12. Here it becomes the right child of 8. And this looks pretty balanced, right? So, and then we're done. So let's insert something else. Let's insert, I don't know, uh, nine. Maybe that'll do something. So it inserts as usual. So there we go. Um, I think it might, oh, actually this might not do anything. So why does this not do anything? This doesn't do anything because um, if you notice here, these are mismatched, these are mismatched, but they're only mismatched by one. So it's still okay, right? It's still okay. So now let's insert another nine just to see what happens. So nine gets inserted. So let's step forward. It goes here, goes here, goes here. So it's gonna insert to the right probably, but that doesn't matter. What really matters here is I was just trying to make I'm trying to make a zigzag condition. So let's see what happens. So here, that's height two, that's height three. And so when we get up to here, we're gonna see the mismatch. Uh, ah, excellent, excellent. So you see here it says double rotate right. So that's not exactly what it's doing, right? The first thing that it's gonna do is it's gonna rotate this one right, and then it's gonna rotate this one left, but we'll just see it. So. The first thing it's going to do is it's actually going to push this one down, pull this one up. Oh, oh yeah, that's the one problem with this visualization, um, is they do the two steps in one. So notice what happened here. Unfortunately, if I hit step forward, it's going to do all, you know, it's going to do both rotations put together. Oh, sure. Sure, here you go. Yeah, so this is, um, and I'll post it in Discord as well. So basically what's happening here is that uh, this one is going to come down and this nine is going to become the, the child, but basically you're going to get a straight line 
and then it's going to rotate all of that right. And so you see, if you notice, it's not moving this one up to be the root. It's moving this one, the one that currently has height of 1 up to be the root. So notice, notice that it didn't just shift this one up. It actually shifted this one up. And the only way to do that would have been a left rotation here and then a right rotation. So what they're calling a double rotate right is actually a left rotation and then a right rotation. Okay, so that's that's one of the zigzag conditions, and then here it's going to check. It's okay. Here it's going to check, and it's okay. Let's try to make another zigzag condition. Um, how do we make another zigzag condition? Uh, hard to say. Let's see. We've got this one. How do we make like a zigzag condition like this? So I think we got to insert say fourteen. Um, skip forward. Oh, wait, whoops. So that actually did some rotations. So let's insert step forward. It did this, did this, and then it, it saw that there was an imbalance here, right? So what it's going to do is it's going to update the height here to two, update the height here to three, but then remember, it's not the height three node that's the problem. The height three node is okay. The problem is that the height three node has a height two child and a height zero child. Height two and zero are mismatched by more than one, right? So now it says adjusting height after recursive call. That's completely fine. Aha, a single rotation right. There we go. So, and then it's done. Okay, so now let's, let's keep trying to make a, an imbalance in this direction. So let's insert uh, 13, right? So let's insert 13, here we go. Should be no problem. It's good. So now we have this kind of symmetric tree thing here. So let's insert 12. And so it's going to notice a uh, a left left imbalance here. Right? This is what we're calling or what I'm calling a left left imbalance. And so because this is a left left imbalance, it's going to do a single right rotation. Not here. But here. Right? It's going to see height 2, height 0, rotate right. Done. So that's good. So now we have a perfectly symmetric tree, which is pretty balanced. So now we want to still, I'm still trying to unbalance it in this direction. I still want to create um, a left or a right left imbalance because we that's the one condition we haven't seen yet. So I want to make this, this direction as heavy as possible. So let's insert 12 again. Skip forward. Oh crap. Let's get back. Uh, insert 12 again. Let's step forward. There we go. Uh, so where's the problem that happens? Okay, so the problem that happens is that this is itself actually imbalanced. This is left-right imbalanced. So this would be a zigzag condition. So actually what it's going to do is move 12 up to be the root. 13 is going to go down to be the right child. 12 here is going to be the left child. Let's see what happens. So... Here's the step to watch. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This is still okay. This is only 2 and 1. This is 1 and 0. Here we have a 3 and a 1, right? The 3 and the 1 is the problem right here. So it's going to, what is it going to do? Um, so actually, this is a single rotation. This is a single rotation right because it's going to rotate 13 up and then it's done. There we go. <sighs> I'm really trying to make a, an imbalanced tree here, so let's insert another 12. Thankfully, this 12 will not mess with anything. So skip forward. You see this 12 just came down here. So now I'm going to try to insert something. How do I insert something into there? I don't know. Um, Unfortunately, uh, I don't know if this thing takes decimals. Yeah, it, it doesn't take decimals. So um, I should have been much more careful here. And let's try to insert 13 again and see what happens. So it's going to go right, then it's going to go left, then it's going to go left. Uh, no imbalance, no imbalance, no imbalance, no. OK. Now let's insert 13 again. And here, so this is a zigzag imbalance, so 13 is going to come up. And 
And then do we have any further imbalances? This is three, nope, insert 13 again. Okay, let's see. So these two are cool because it's two and one. These two are not cool because it's three and one. So it's gonna have to think about what to do. Ah, good, I think we've just caused a left-right imbalance again. So 14 is gonna come up, right? 14 is gonna pop up. So it's gonna be a double, it, they're calling it a double rotate, right? But really what it is, is it's a left rotation and then a right rotation. So first they're gonna rotate 14 up here. And then what they're gonna do is they're gonna rotate right. So what's gonna happen is 14 is gonna look like it just ascends, it floats through this, this thing and comes up. 15 is gonna come down to be the right child. There we go. And notice that, notice that what happens here is that this 13 has to become the left child here. And then since this 13 is losing its left child, this one joins on here. So um, it's all very complicated because it's like two rotations smushed into one. But watch what happens. So this 13 will join up with this one. And then all of this, all the 13s will come down and be the left child here. Right? So this 13 joined up with this one. All the 13s are now the left child of the 14. And we're good again. Right? And then it's going to check and check. Let's insert 18 and see what happens. So 18. Step forward, step forward, step forward, step forward, step forward. So here it's just going to do a simple rotation left and fix this single imbalance, which is just kind of boring. So fine, fine, fine. Let's insert 22. Uh, OK, like this. No imbalances, I don't think, right? Uh, let's see, no imbalances here, so that's two and one, so that's cool. Three and two, so that's good. Ah, four and two. That's a problem, right? This here is a problem, right here. Because we're going to see a, this is an imbalance by more than two. And so then here it's going to say five, but we don't care about the height here. Remember, we do not care that this is height five. What we care about is that this is height four and this is height two. So what's going to happen is... Uh, let's see what's going to happen. So we look down here, and we see that it's heavier on the right, and it's heavier on the right. So this is going to be a single left rotation. So 14 is going to come up. Right, 14 is going to come up. 13 is this 13 is going to go down, and these 13 is the, these uh, this 13 subtree here is going to join onto this 13 node here. Right, and 12 is going to stay. 17 is going to stay. So these. This child is going to stay, this child is going to stay. The only things that are going to change is that 13 is going to get another right child, 14 is going to lose these guys and pick up this guy. Single rotate left. Let's get ready. It's going to look confusing, but remember, 14 is going to become the root, 13 is going down, this 13 will join on here. So watch for each of those things as it happens. Let's see if we can slow down the animation speed. Step forward. Right? So this 13 came down to become the left child, this 14 became the parent, and that's that's what ended up happening. Um, yep, so now we have a huge tree. <laughs> that's kind of horrible, but uh, that's what it is, right? So, so that's basically how the AVL tree works, right? That's how AVL insertion works, okay? And so AVL deletion works much the same way. You basically delete the same way as you delete, and then you will, as you're going back up, you're gonna run the AVL fix up. So AVL fix up uh, works on both insert and delete. So basically what, else, what I'm saying by this is that, um, so what you do is you run insert, and you should, generally the way that we implement uh, AVL trees are generally implemented recursively. And the reason why we recurse is that at every level uh, we say, you know, if less, go left, if right, if bigger, go right. And then what we say is after the insertion 
uh, pops back up to this level of the recursion, we run AVL fixup on our on us, right? And so what that means is AVL fixup is the thing that is going to check the the heights of the two children and then perform the rotations or rations rotations if required so avl fix up is going to basically so that's that's like the uh, step of insertion and so and it's the same thing for delete so for for deletion and i know i haven't done deletion but deletion is going to be much the same as insertion where you're going to uh, delete as usual, only we're going to do it recursively. So delete recursively. And then what we're going to do is on the way back up, run AVL fix up in order to fix up the nodes. So that's what's going to end up happening. Um, and that is the moral of the story for AVL trees. So AVL trees, what do they do, right? The whole point of an AVL tree, and it's a very strict, it, so AVLs are basically the strictest uh, of self-balancing trees because they force you to have the same heights and by same I mean same up to a difference of one right so it's always same up to uh, a difference of one um, right heights on both the left and the right of any uh, any node you pick, so pick any any node. Uh, when would someone use an AVL tree in real life? The answer is if you're going to actually use a binary search tree, um, you probably want to use an AVL tree. The reason why is because uh, AVL trees guarantee log runtime. Uh, binary search trees guarantee nothing, right? They can, they on average will perform uh, log n operations. And what, what I mean by log n operations is insert, uh, find, delete, right? But AVLs tell you 100% you're getting O of log n operations every single time. And so the problem is that if you accidentally, let's say that you have a binary search tree that has say 10 million elements in it, right? And say it takes one second uh, to perform, well, let's say it takes like 0 0.001, so it's one thousandth of a second uh, to perform an operation, meaning like a, a single operation, like a font, like a, a recursive call or something like that. And so if you accident, so if you get most of the time, you're gonna get like a log operation so the log of 10 million you know is approximately what I mean it's approximately the natural log it's somewhere around there it's it's gonna be what um, so 2 to the seventh or 10 to the seventh but then it's really 2 cubed somewhere between 2 cubed and 2 to the fourth so it's like 7 times 3.5 so it's gonna be something like 24 so it's gonna be something like point 024 seconds. But if you run into an O of n operation, right, that's going to give you something on the order of 10,000 seconds, right? So the log operation, it's, you know, if, it, if you perform LG, like log base 2, so if you perform about 24 operations, that's going to run in 0 0.024 seconds. Um, on the other hand, if you get an O of n operation, so it's like hitting a landmine, right? This is like uh, hitting a landmine. And so all of a sudden your program is running along fine, everything's going well, and then it's, things start to slow down, then all of a sudden you do a find on the tree, and it just happens to be in this like O of n configuration, and you just hit something that's gonna, you know, 10,000 seconds, right? So no one is ever going to wait that. People are going to think the program's crashed. And so that's the problem. This is the problem with binary search trees. And this is the problem that AVL trees fix, right? So um, now you are not going to be implementing AVL trees every day, right? So there are pre-built um, implementations 
of this stuff, right? So you're never going to be like, if you're in a business context, you're not going to be implementing this stuff by yourself, you know, or if you do, then it'll be like the one time that it gets implemented. Um, and so they'll, they'll make sure it's optimized and correct and all that stuff. But the thing about it is that generally, um, the AVL and the other, the other type of self-balancing tree that actually enforces self-balancing is called red black. Um, and AVL force O of log N operations all the time. No exceptions, no accidents, no landmines, right? That's, that's the good news about these things. They're much more complicated to implement. So the implementation is way more complicated but the runtime is way, way, way less. Um, mostly, you know, if you hit a bad configuration on the BST. So that's basically the point, is that you can accidentally make linked lists very easily, especially on a binary search tree. If you start inserting sorted data, if you insert a bunch of sorted elements into a binary search tree, you're gonna get linked list performance very quickly. That's, it's just very bad. So, and that actually has to do with the Discord tree. So I know I didn't talk at all about the project, but this is the project, right? This is project two, uh, is AVL trees. As you know, project two is another Turducken project um, um, where this time the, tur the turkey uh, is an AVL tree and the, the duck is a, um, is a discord tree, which is some, it's actually an invented thing. Uh, it, it kind of exists, but it's, it's, you know, it's a pretend thing really. It has bad performance, or it doesn't have bad performance. It just has weird performance. Uh, you would never use it, uh, except for the project, right? And I'll talk about Discord trees next time. Discord trees are way simpler than AVL trees. Um, they actually, and I'll talk to you exactly about how to how to make a Discord tree, and we'll talk about all this stuff uh, next time. So we'll start with uh, maybe a little bit of AVL review, and then we'll go right into Discord trees and finish talking about the project um, next time. And that's it for today, I think. Uh, let's see. Right, so if you notice, this is a Turducken project, right? So the project is, the first level of things that you have to do is implement an AVL tree, which I am sorry. Uh, I always hate that you have to implement a self-balancing tree as your first tree. And then here, they've even used, uh, you know, Discord as, you know, whatever. So the point here is that there's some rule here that when there's an imbalance, when one child's size, so my assumption is that we actually have to keep track of like weights rather than heights. And I'll explain what I mean by that. Um, and then once the weights are sufficiently imbalanced, then what we're gonna do is we'll rebalance uh, those subtrees. And you rebalance actually by doing this other operation, which is technically, we've talked about this before. Um, the operation is actually an in-order traversal. You do an in-order traversal of the subtree and then you create a balanced subtree from that in order traversal. So you're basically going to be remaking the tree. So this actually might be difficult to implement. It's it's easy to understand. It's going to be hard to implement. So yeah, <laughs> I think AVL is somewhat hard to understand initially. The implementation is medium, but after you're done with the implementation and once you understand everything, then it's a little easier to understand. So that is one thing. But then this one, I think, is easy to understand, hard to, harder to implement, trickier to implement, I think. So the exam I'm going to release next Thursday. OK, exam is going to be released next Thursday. All right, so that's, that's basically it. So you're going to have to stick a Discord tree inside of an AVL tree. And that's and then I guess the chicken is the account, right? So that's that's the turducken of this project, unfortunately. So there's I, there's no way to avoid it. It just um, the course chair really really just loves these these turducken projects. Like 
build two data structures, stick one inside of the other. I'm like, okay. Um, but anyway, that's the point. So I'm actually thinking that what, what I might do is I might have a due date for the Discord tree that's different than the Discord than for the whole project. So I want you to build the Discord tree first and get through it so that you can then test it out and then build your AVL tree. Um, I will set a due date for that. Uh, it might be towards the like end of spring break or something like that. And I just want I want to see progress so that we don't. The, the thing about Project Two last semester was it was a similar project. It was an AVL tree of splay trees, and we haven't gotten to splay trees yet. And I'm I'll wait to teach splay trees until after I get through all the stuff for the project. But the point is that um, very few people got over fifty percent on Project Two. And the reason for it was that everybody started way too late. They underestimated the, the absolute calamity that was heading towards them. And then in the defense of the students, it's also very difficult to write a balanced search tree as your first binary search tree. So what I think you should do is like review my sample code and then we'll go over basically hints about how to implement it and how your implementation of the AVL and the Discord have to differ from my implementation of the binary search tree that I did. So I, I want to make the Discord tree do earlier than the project just so that you guys have a little bit of fear in you and you actually are forced to do this early. Because if you don't get this done early, if, if your Discord tree isn't working a week before the project due date, you will probably not finish, is what I'm going to say. And I know that I'm trying to strike fear in you, so uh, yes. Hopefully, hopefully you are now sufficiently afraid and you will work on the Discord tree, get it done, um, and I'll explain it as soon as I can. I might even do uh, an extra lecture on it. Um, maybe Ben and I are going to do it. Uh, we've been talking about doing an extra lecture on it. So uh, we might do that and then we'll post it sometime maybe either this weekend or, or at latest Tuesday. So start working on it, trying to understand it, and uh, that's all for today. All right. Um, okay, thanks, everybody. Uh, good luck on Project 2.